Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at this exercise that illustrate the concept of failure to pay your taxes, failure to file, and failure to pay the estimated income tax. This topic is important. It's on the CPA exam as well as your income tax course. You want to make sure you are familiar with this concept. I do have recording about this. Also, if you are studying for your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your Becker, Roger, Gleam, or Wiley. That's not what I do, and I can do that. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points. How do I do so? I explain the material differently. No better, no less. Differently. You may need that different explanation, different perspective to understand the material better. And your risk is subscribing for one month. Your return is possibly passing the exam. If you don't like it, you can cancel, but you would lose one month of subscription. But the alternative is not the alternative. The payout is good if it works for you. If not for anything, check out my website to determine how well is your university doing or not doing for the CPA exam. I do have resources for other accounting as well as CPA courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and you, on LinkedIn you can view my LinkedIn recommendation, actual CPA candidate that used my system. Please like this recording, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So Maggie's 2020 tax return was due on April 15, 2021, but she did not file it until June 12, 2021. So Maggie was late and Maggie did not file an extension. So although you file an extension, you still have to send the money if you owe any money. Remember that. Just file an extension. It doesn't mean you don't have to pay the money. The tax due on the tax return when filed was 8500 So that's the check that Maggie had to write. In 2020, Maggie paid 12000 through withholding. What does that mean? It means she paid from her W-2. Her W-2 showed 12000 of withholding. Then she paid herself. 8,500 when she filed the return. What does that mean? It means her total tax bill was $20,500. Her tax liability uh, was 11,500 the prior year. So for the prior year, her tax liability was 11,500. 2020, this is 2020, it was 20,500. Maggie's AGI is less than 150,000. How much penalty will Maggie have to pay this regard interest? Now we have to determine what's the penalty that Maggie have to pay. Well, for one thing, she was late for two months from April 15th till June 15th. Well, failure to pay, she did not pay her taxes. How much did she owe? She owed $8,500. So let's start with failure to pay for those two months. Failure to pay, we're going to multiply this by 0.5%. Let's just make sure we, we go through this. 0.5%, then multiply this by 2. That's going to be her failure to pay. And failure to file, because she did not file. Failure to file, 8,500 times. Here the penalty is 5% times two months as well. Okay, now let's compute this. I'm, this is going to be a little bit redundant, but I'm going to have to do this just to show you the concept as well, because it's important to understand what concept is taking place here. So let's do this. So if we take, now remember, this is 0.5%, which is 0 0.005. We're going to take point, 0 0.005 times two times 8,500. And that's going to be $85 for failure to pay. Then failure to file is 5% times 2 is 10%, which is 0 0.1 times 8,500. That's $850. Now, if both, if both penalties apply in the same period, which they do for two months, then guess what? Then we'll kind of, kind of the IRS says you don't have to pay failure to pay. So we can... You don't have to pay failure to pay. Okay, therefore, those two penalties, the total is 850. Simply put, they, in a sense, they, not they give you a credit, but since they are run concurrently, they said if they are run concurrently, you just have to failure 
to file penalty, not failure to pay. Don't, don't worry about failure to pay as long as these two penalties run concurrently, which they did for those two months. Now, that's her penalty. Now, what about failure to pay estimated income tax? She did not pay enough income tax. Is there a penalty for that? Well, for one thing, she's less than 150000 And if that's the case, there are certain rules Okay, to avoid this penalty. They must pay either through withholding a minimum of 90% of the current tax or 100% of the prior tax, assuming the AGI is less than 150. So how can how can uh, how can how can she avoid the penalty? Well, we have to find out what's 90% of 20,500. Well, we really don't have to do that, but I'm going to show you the concept. The reason I say this because because Maggie paid 20,000. I'm sorry, not 20,000. Well, because the second rule is 100% of prior year. She did pay 100% of prior year. The prior year she paid 11,000. She paid 11,000 and uh, this year she paid 12,000. Therefore, she made that 100% of the prior year. But just I want to show you the uh, the computation is let's see 20,500 times 0.9 which is she did not pay 8 8 8,450. So she did not meet 90% of the current year, but she meet 100% of the prior year. She paid a little bit more than the prior year just from her withholding. For some reason, it seems Maggie got a side job and made some extra money and did not pay taxes on this extra money. This is what it looks, what happened really from this. So this is, so this is the penalty. So there's no penalty for failure to pay estimated taxes. There's no penalty for that. Okay. Therefore, what, what we did is we computed the failure to pay, but we did not count it because failure to file, if they both run concurrently, we just go 850, no penalty for failure to pay estimated income taxes. Once again, I'm going to invite you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com. This topic is important for the CPA exam. So you really want to know how you compute all these penalties. There are different types of penalties. I explain it in details. Uh, good luck. Of course, study hard and stay safe.